Welcome back to Hobson's Choice Harleys. We're working on the 81 Wide Glide. We started the other day on this and I had pulled the outer primary and got stuck on the compensator bolt. Ended up having to buy a three quarter inch, 1700 pound torque air impact wrench. I'd never seen one that tight. Must've had a lot of red Loctite in it. We got the outer primary out. We got the clutch basket off. We did get the inner primary pulled off. Now I'm working on accessing the shifter linkage. I don't know if you can tell, but this linkage is jacked up. This thing is locked in between gears. I'm hoping it's just in the top, but the only way to do that and find out is to at least pull the top of the transmission. So today we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil out of here, get the oil bag and battery out of the way and see if it's accessible to pull the top of this transmission without pulling the whole transmission. So how big a mess can I make? Let's see. All right. So I should drain in. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, pull the battery. Actually, the oil looks reasonably clean. So we'll see. Set that drain plug there. I did disconnect the battery before messing with that solenoid. And this battery is cooked, done, toast. So we're gonna replace that battery before we put this back together too. A lot of funky going on here, but I mean, I've seen a lot worse wiring, but it sure isn't the best either. I'm gonna let that drain down a little more before we can get this off of here. And it's an aftermarket oil bag. So it looks like I got a rubber isolator there, one here and one here, and that's it. It's just the three rubber boots, which is cool. So let me see, I think those are 716s. I'm gonna see if I can't move this one up just. There, let's see. Be interesting to see how far into this transmission I'm gonna have to go to get this thing back on the road for the guy. It's a rotary top, which to me is different. I'm used to the uh, ratchet top transmission. It's kind of a learning curve to figure out why that shifter linkage isn't making connections or what's loose. I know this bracket bushing in there is totally blown out, but even if I put a wrench on here and try and adjust this manually, it's still locked in. It was between second and third. I was able to downshift it down down into first gear, but I can't get it to come back at all. It won't even come into neutral at all. So now she's just locked into first gear. It's nice to have it up in the air because I can spin it and see my shaft is still spinning. So I can't, can't get her to come to neutral no matter what I do. She's just locked. That one's missing its bolt altogether. I'm gonna go around the other side, see if I can back this starter out of the way without tearing all the wiring off, hopefully. No, that's a no-go. So I'm gonna have to trace. That's probably the main stator line let's see what the wiring here looks like not too shabby so we're gonna go ahead and pull the stator off so i can drag that primary wire to the starter back out of here new gaskets all this has to be replaced new gaskets new washers just all that little odds and ends stuff so now we should be able to leave that wire up here out of the way and we can get that boot out of here and then I, hopefully i can fish this wire through and get that starter out of my way Okay, so now we got the starter out of the way. And again, some of this, I'll check all this, but having this got a half a roll of black tape on it makes me wonder what's up with that power wire. If it were my bike, I would tear the wiring out of this and probably redo the wiring, but I can only do what I'm paid to do on this bike. This isn't an HCH Hobson's Choice Harley's bike. This is a client's bike. So I have to take that with a grain of salt on fix what the client wants fixed. And else it's a safety hazard. You know, if there's a brake issue or something like that, of course I would bring that to the attention of the client. Looks like our rubber isolator is totally broke there. We're about drained of oil. Let me put this drain plug back in. And once I get them oil lines off, I should be able to take this oil bag out and we'll have a visual of what's up with this transmission at that point. You know, just to assess the situation, you've got $100 in materials. You know, a bit of oil nowadays is running eight bucks a quart. You got four quarts, five quarts, the transmission. So you got six quarts, your gaskets. So just your gaskets and oil is almost $100 without even laying a wrench on the machine. $100 for the battery. I mean, any of you guys work on your own bikes, you'll know that it just ain't getting any cheaper that's for sure we should be close to loose let's see my goodness sometimes getting these old oil lines off are a lot of fun 
on any of the shovels, you just basically, you got three oil lines. You got a feed line, a return line, and a vent line. I'm not gonna say they're foolproof, but it's it's pretty easy to, to just disconnect these. It's not rocket science to figure out that the one on the very bottom of the oil tank feeds to the pump, and the other two feed back to the tank, and one of them is a feed, and then, like I said, the other one's just a vent, your crankcase ventilated. Pretty easy oiling systems on these machines. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pull this back pipe out of the way give me room to get to the transmission anyway plus i don't want to ding up the pipes this whole project started from this set of pipes and the the seat for this machine i sold this gentleman the pipes and the seat for this machine a couple three months ago i was so busy i couldn't even look at it he was having misfiring problems and i told him that i was three or four weeks out and he took it to somebody else who put a new coil in it and then on the way home from picking it up is when the transmission seized up i don't think any of it was connected i think it was just coincidental he wasn't real happy with the service he got at that other shop so he waited until i was available to do the work on it which to me is great you know nice guy cool to be able to, to work with somebody like that so there's that brand new pipe Let's see what else i've got here oh i gotta add to my list these rubber isolators the oil bag isolators i need three of them i could reuse these but i personally would just soon have new ones in there oil bag is out so game on transmission is visible I can get down in there. Yeah, see that rubber isolator is completely gone. Sprayed a bunch of degreasers. You can see the linkage is now visible. So we're going to pull this linkage apart here. That's the one that I know is loose, but even this one doesn't, doesn't work. See how it's locked there? It's not moving. It'll go down, but it won't go up. So my hope is it's up here in the rotary top, and I don't have to go into the whole transmission. We're going to go ahead and pull this linkage apart, see if I can break these bolts loose, and pull the top of this tranny out. All right, so we get that out of the way. I already had this loose before. Part of the problem, if you look here, look at how much slop is in there. It shouldn't have that much slop. And this is basically, you've got this arm rotating on this arm, rotating this arm that rotates here. I can actually take this rod from the shifter, correct it, and connect it to here and eliminate this piece, which is three less pivoting points to bind up on here. So we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to get to that or not. And then the shop list just keeps getting bigger. I'm going to need these little cotter pins. You guys that work on your own stuff, I'm sure are familiar with this, but a lot of people are like, they get a little weirded out when you talk to them about shop supplies. But you got to understand, guys, all this stuff adds up. And I don't mind throwing a cotter pin in here or a gasket in there, but you can't rebuild build a whole machine and expect not to end up eating some cost and just shop supplies above oil and gas i mean there's always a bunch of odds and ends this won't come off yet so rotary top that looks like those are seven sixteenths they are <sighs> I didn't get some really good close-ups, but the grease and grime that was dripping off of here was huge. So I did do a, a fairly good job of cleaning all that out so that we're not dumping any grease and grime down in that transmission. Uh, this one I'll have to get a wrench on because you can't get a socket in there. So it looks like there's five attachments and I can get to three of them with a socket and two of them are going to be wrench. And I hoping this whole top comes out of here without removing the transmission okay, and then anytime i'm doing something i haven't done before i'm always checking when i pull stuff out bolt lengths are the same because not always that way a lot of times you'll have i know like on the ratchet tops there's nine holes up top and there's two or three of them that are different lengths you gotta make sure that you get your short bolt in the short hole or you'll blow a case you'll you'll crack something i mean you can do a lot of damage by not paying attention to how stuff comes apart going back together can be a nightmare so all right so i went and got my ratcheting 7 16 and it don't fit either so it's just gonna be a turn at a time that's all you can do so a guy could take that nut off and be able to get in there with some stuff but being unfamiliar with that nut and not what knowing what it's holding inside there i don't want to take that off if i don't have to now once i get this all apart i have looked online for the rebuild kits and there's a paul spring p-a-w-l springs in here so there's two springs so this thing does this is how it grabs the different gears so i'm probably going to have to do a complete rebuild on the top but i'm hoping when i get in here the shifter forks and the gears on the main shaft and the counter shaft all look good because that's what gets pricey you know 
really expensive. A guy could spend a thousand dollars in parts real quick if you got to start replacing gear. So we're going to hope that it's in sound shape. In fact, usually these rotary tops aren't a hugely desirable transmission and most people won't spend a lot of money rebuilding them because you can buy a whole new, either a rebuilt or a used transmission like this for about 500 bucks. They're out there. But again, do you get one that's in the same condition as this one that's going to lock up? After doing some research on this, I found out that these ratchet or these rotary tops are notorious for linkage issues up in this top end. And again, yeah, my ratchet's not going to go on that either. So this yellow wire goes right here. It's actually a neutral safety switch, which if it works, I'll hook it back up. Basically up here, that middle light will be green when it's in neutral because this wire that I just showed you, the yellow wire sends a signal up to that to let you know when you're in neutral. So if it's working, I'll reconnect it. Personally, I don't have any of those lights connected on any of my stuff. Just because I wire real simple. I do the seven wire chopper stuff if I'm building the bike from the ground up. Like my green bike over here, my 69. It has all factory wiring. It's got a complete canvas loom on it. So it has every wire there but none of them are hooked up. I don't have the blinkers hooked up. I don't have the neutral light hooked up just because I don't really care about any of that stuff. So let's see what we can do here. I think we're all loose. We're just kind of going nice and easy. Trying to tap everybody and get her to loosen up a little. All right, guys, so we're getting there. I did take this main shifter linkage off. And if you look here, the rust and grime, that's not dirt. That is grime. I mean, that is in there. Not really rust, but it's kind of like uh, oxidation of sorts where it's built up. So that's just moisture in the transmission. And I really had to fight to get this top to bust loose. So I wouldn't be surprised if our whole issue isn't right here in this plate. So if you look at your gears, each one of these notches is a gear. See, so it's moving there, but part of our issue is not getting into gear. So we're going to have to clean all this up and see what's up. But so that would be first, first neutral, second, third, fourth. So that should be neutral. There's neutral. See how everything's free spinning? That's the first time it's had neutral in a while, and it actually was stuck over in between gears so let me find a reasonably clean rag because we want to make sure we don't get anything down in that gearbox so right now i'm just letting that oil drop in there and i'm going to pull this off and i don't know what you guys call them but i call them top hats and this off so those top hats actually ride in these grooves and that's what is rotating it when your pawl that goes here basically it just turns this thing left or right you know so it just goes click click first neutral second, third, fourth. So that's what we got to get it to do. And first inspection, nothing looks bad inside there. And just kicking it over that little bit, I've got neutral, which I haven't had neutral. I don't think the bottom end of this has to come apart. Let me grab a flashlight and get a little better look. We'll see where we're at, guys. So what I want to do here is I'm going to turn this. Maybe I just turn the wheel. I'm just turning the back wheel, and I'm not seeing any dirt. I'm not seeing any metal. So basically what I'm doing is you've got four gears, and I'm looking down this gear while I do a rotation. Then I'm going to do this gear. So basically I'm looking at all eight surfaces one at a time, and I've got to make sure there's no chipped teeth, worn teeth. Wow, okay guys, I think we're in good shape, I really do. Let's see if I can get this over here. There we go, get that last gear spinning. Yeah, everything's clean. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff this all full of clean rags down in there. And then I've got to get all this old gasket surface stuff off of here all the way around. And then that top that I had showed you, the rotary top for this actually needs to be rebuilt, gone through, cleaned up, new gaskets. And hopefully we'll get this guy back on the road here in the next day or two. After looking at the bottom end of the transmission, everything inside the gearbox is okay. This is our rotary top. So you can see we're hitting the neutral safety switch. So you've got these notches right here is neutral. So that's first gear, neutral, second gear, 
third gear, fourth gear. When I took this thing apart, I was way over here past everything. In fact, I was thinking this was first gear because the whole plate had been shifted the wrong direction. I don't know how he got it there. The problem right now is she's not going either way. This haul has to come apart. I'm gonna have to pull this off. This is just a spring-loaded follower and I can move this by hand with not a whole lot of problem. You see, I can get it to move there. First, neutral, Let's see, and that's all it wants to do. It doesn't want to go into second. There's second, third. Yeah, see, it's going past fourth, which it ain't supposed to do. And then I can get it to come around, but boy, I got to work it awful hard, and it's not doing anything over here like it should. And granted, it's not on the transmission, so it's going to be harder to do here like this but it's not even rotating this plate. So something has gone awry under here. So that's next is we're gonna pull these little tabs off, the locking tabs, pull this spring block out, pull the plate across out of here and see what's going on underneath it. This guy's been waiting, so I told him I'd get it in, but if any of you guys are following our videos, I've got soft tail Sally torn apart, waiting for paint. I've got the survey car torn apart. I got so many projects going right now. I don't know which way is up. But the nice part about this one, even though the timing could be better, is this is a paying job. So, you know that paint for Soft Tail Sally? It ain't gonna pay for itself. And to buy the material to paint that survey car, it ain't gonna buy itself. So, having a paying job's not a bad deal. I wish I had this on my bench where I could put it in a vise. You just gotta take the days as they come. I'm actually really excited that I don't have to rebuild that whole transmission and then see what we got on this that it don't fly. There it is. That's the spring I was worried about. Okay, so this whole block is coming apart. Yeah, see it? Something are weird there. It should be stopping right there and it shouldn't go any further than about right there. And if you hear when I turn it, See, it's real hard to turn and then it gets loose and that little click right there something's a mess in here so we're gonna have to figure out how to get this baby out of here and then we're gonna see if we take this back apart if that's all that's holding us in that shaft so yeah all this stuff's gonna have to get soaked in the parts washer like i showed you the gasket removal on the box in the bike that's kind of tedious and you got to be real careful this one i'll have it all apart so i'll be able to clean this up take a razor to it wire brush it i mean this will come apart pretty easy again these parts i'm going to stick over in my box of goodies so as not to lose anything so i'm just kind of getting a visual down in here to see what goes where so i'm pretty sure that that's like a freeze plug that has to come out to be able to get to that shaft to neutral see it just hanging up right there something ain't right there so there's neutral but without that spring on it, it should be an almost an easy turn left and right. And she's nowhere close to that. So if that was running, that would be fourth. That would be third. See, be between fourth and third, there's a flat spot. And then third, second, neutral, there's a flat spot. First, there's a flat spot. So something ain't right in this shaft. We're going to have to figure out how to get that out. All right, guys. So we're back in here and figured it out. The uh, inside of here, now that you can see it, let me just get these screws a couple of turns. See how it turns there and it turns there. So it'll go down to first, second. I mean, so one way is upshift, one way is downshift. This is factory original 1979 part, if you can see the numbers. So that's the part number. That's the year. Um, everything here is clean and working well. What you don't realize is this plate that is welded in there is completely toastified. Yeah, check it out. So it looks like it was welded here. And the welds were broke. Actually, I didn't figure this out. I started to take this freeze plug out and I just I mean literally tapped barely tapped and I heard clunk well clunk was that gear falling off so I'm gonna have to do some research on 
if that's all it had originally, is that a factory weld that's just gave up the ghost after 40 years or what? But that's why I was finding the dead spots because it was, uh, this was spinning on the shaft where it's not supposed to do. Because everything down in here, smooth, you know, upshift, downshift, springs, everything's clean, everything's fresh, uh, with the exception of that arm that needs to be dressed up a little. So this just needs a little TLC. That needs help. So I'm going to have to see if that shaft is, do I replace the shaft with the cam follower or do I just try and weld it back in there and hope for the best? All right, so we've been through this a little bit. We've diagnosed the problem. Got to do some research. Got to find some parts. Got to figure out how to get this top end back together. Also got to clean all the mating surfaces up on both. So not a huge deal. Just got to do some research on that shaft assembly and get that back in a running order or replace it. Some gaskets, some fluids, new battery, and we should have this machine back on the road, hopefully within a week. I work a daytime job, so this is a side gig. So hopefully I can get it done over the next week in the afternoons or evenings. All right, stay tuned for more. Kickstart that like button. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered and I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.